If you guys don't know, today we're talking about the disaster that hit the middle school up in northern China in Chichihar. Um, but we're going to cover it in detail because there's a lot of things that are being glossed over slash missed about mm -hmm. this. And it's much bigger than just the disaster. Because like if it was just about uh, some people dying, that would be tragic in itself. But there's this is a much bigger picture to Correct. be talked about. First things first. Uh, this was posted to Weibo today. And... Um, the Chichihar Road in Shanghai has been, um, well, apparently all the flower shops are closed. I wonder which why. Is interesting. This has got everything to do with what we're talking about today, yeah. but I'd like you to bear this in mind because we'll be getting right back to this. Um, let's talk about Chichihar first. Chichihar is a city in Heilongjiang province. We've been there. Do you want to tell everyone about it? Yeah, yeah, we were up there. It's uh, all the way up in the, if you look at a map of China, there's, it looks like a chicken. And the head of the chicken all the way at the top is a province called Heilongjiang, which translates to Black Dragon River. Cool, Very cool coolest name. name. Coolest name for like a state province. Yes, yeah. Uh, mm. Anyway, we're up there filming uh, some cranes, very famous for all the cranes, you know, those big white birds. Yeah, the birds, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> long story short, Chichihar is kind of an industrial city. It used to be Manchurian. Mm -hmm. um, it's one of the coldest, coldest cities in China, and it's kind of built around being cold. <laughs> everything yeah. you, know, you can tell, everything's ready to be like winterized. You know. Yeah. Anyway, it's very uh, your average, normal northern Chinese city. It's up kind of near Russia. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, we were there. We spent yeah. a good amount of time there. Uh, we met this really yeah. nice old man. <laughs> Here's a clip of us. Actually, this is yeah. There's me. Yeah. What's up, buddy? There's a nice old man that we met. Oh yeah, I gotta, I gotta tell you, he was really quite something special. Yeah, because he spotted us foreigners, and he mm. just was you know blown away he couldn't wait to talk to us and he was talking about friendship he needs some words he kept saying friendship yeah yeah nice experience that's yeah. why i'm glad you managed to catch that bit on camera yeah. uh and of course we we had a uh, barbecue up there and well we stayed there in between traveling around during uh conquering northern china yes. documentary anyway let's go to the street level of chichihar mm -hmm. okay I'd like you to take a look at this particular area in Chichihar. It's not far away from where we were staying, actually. No, it's very, very close. What do we have? We have up there the the great helmsman, as they call him. Yeah, Chairman Mao. I wouldn't say you're such a great helmsman if you steer a ship into the rocks, though, would you? Yeah, say the, on purpose. And then cannibalize the crew and set them on fire. I'd say you're a bad helmsman. Yeah. Anyway, this bad, is... A, the worst helmsman. The worst helmsman, Mao Zedong, over here. So there's this massive statue, and he's, like, pointing over there and... It's kind of at a traffic circle, right? Yeah, I know exactly where that is, actually. Yeah, now, now I'd like everybody to see what the uh, great, not-so-great helmsman over there. Let's just see him once more. There he is. Uh, let's see what he's pointing at. Yeah, it's the city center in Longsha District, it's called. Mm -hmm. yeah, what yeah. is he pointing at? Yeah, let's take a look. Um, well, I just went to you know Baidu, yeah. Baidu Maps to take a look. So he's pointing here. You can't really see it. So the, let's move a little more forward so we can get a closer. This closer is where look. his hands pointing. Mm -hmm. So what's going on? You can't really see it. Okay, let's go forward a little bit more so we can see what he's pointing at over there. There we go. Now we can see it. Okay, I want you to take a close look at this building because it's going to feature a lot in this particular episode. So this building over here. Belongs to the the Chichihar Number Thirty Four Middle School. Okay, so this building is pointing. Look, there's the Mao Zedong statue you can see over there, and he's pointing. There's the uh, the Chichihar Number Thirty Four Middle School. Always have the most classic names in China. Yeah, exa isn't it great? What school do you go to? I go to the Number Thirty Four. I. It's funny because like mm -hmm. when we were in China, the kids would brag about because you'd have way more privileged schools. Yeah, like I go to number eight, and they're like, "Oh, number eight sucks." I go to number five. Yeah, exactly. It's like <laughs> very communist. Yeah, thing. it's super communist. Um, mm. This is that building that we saw from the street from another angle. Yeah. Hideous thing. It's a Tiuguan, which means a gymnasium. Yeah. Okay, so it's a gymnasium, uh, sports gymnasium for the number 34 middle school. Can you explain what ages go to middle school in China? Uh, you can have 12 to 15, 12 to 16, around yeah. there. 
So yeah. early teens. Yeah. yeah. So you know, it's uh, there's it's that. Kids. Yeah. It's there's not that like college age kids. This is their middle yeah, school. Yeah. Like teenagers. To Sixteen. Yeah. It's, t- it's teenagers. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So there's our, our sports gymnasium. And this happened to be the practice grounds for the number 34 middle school volleyball schools, a uh, girls club team. or whatever, team. Team yeah. is the right which, word. Uh, which were quite good uh, nationally, Yeah, they, they actually won, an, as you can see, they won an award here. They came second place, like, um, uh, basically in, in a big national competition. They're very good at what they're doing. Tall people up there. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, so basketball they, teams do really well up there too. Doing all their practice and whatnot in that exact gymnasium that you saw there. Yeah, uh, and you know they're very dedicated, so dedicated that they were always out practicing even during their holidays because it's, yeah. it's, it's currently like yeah. school holidays. Definitely one of the practicing. better like teams in one of these small cities. Yeah, so I mean, av- average age 15, 16 years old thereabouts. Yeah. Um, so they're busy, uh, you know, hanging out and doing their practice in their gymnasium. That's a picture of them all together over there. I'll get us out of here. And the tragic thing is that everybody that you see in this picture is dead. And uh, the reason that they're dead, we're going to explain. This is April uh, 16th of this year. And you can see that gymnasium over there, the Mao Zedong statue down there that we showed you earlier, and the gymnasium. And let's look a couple of days ago on the 23rd of July. Same gymnasium, but you'll notice something. There's something on the roof. Now, what you can see there is a bunch of tarp, and it's covering something. Something that we'll explain to you in a little while. But anyway, this is the 20th, right? Yeah, three days before it happened. This is the 23rd, and you can see that the roof has collapsed uh, of the gymnasium. Literally smushed everyone in there. Yeah, and th- the unfortunate thing is that uh, the girls' volleyball team was practicing at the time, and they were killed. Yeah. And this is why. Let's take a look. Uh, this is construction material that uh, was piled on top of the gymnasium. Yeah. What was that, by the way? Because it looks like, to me, just like bags of nondescript stuff. It could be, it looks like cement or something, right? Mm-hmm. So it's called perlite. Yeah. It's actually a volcanic glass. And the crazy property of perlite is that it's amorphous. Yeah, that's perlite, by the way. Yeah, so and it's actually it's naturally occurring. This is not a man-made substance, but it's actually non-renewable. There's a finite amount of this, right? Yeah. And when you dig it up, um, it's used for things like to mix into concrete or insulation or filtration. And the reason is is that it's amorphous and it actually can expand between seven and 16 times its original size when right. introduced to, to water. Right. So it retains a, uh, an incredible amount of water, making its mass so large and heavy. So you can imagine the substance that literally just blows up like a marshmallow, but it's sure. very heavy. Yeah, here you can see it being used as insulation where you just pour it in between two, like a brick and uh, you know, cinder block wall. Think of it like a porous glass that could hold water. Yeah. So I'm guessing you all know what happened now from what we've uh, shown you is you've got this gymnasium. By the way, they're building a new building right next to the gymnasium there, something to do with uh, the school. And uh, the construction workers, for convenience sake, loaded up all their construction material, the perlite, on top of the gymnasium, Mm -hmm. which is, of course, absurd if you think about it because it's not an incredibly strong structure to begin with. It was built in 1997, by the way, that particular Mm -hmm. uh, gymnasium looks like it was built 1907 yeah i mean that, that's how it goes right yeah. yeah um but uh it resulted in of course this collapse now what exacerbated it was first of all they overloaded it with the construction materials which they shouldn't have put anything on that roof in the first place yes it's not designed as a load-bearing no. structure it shouldn't be there um but, but it should have been able to hold it if it was a normal building okay <laughs> yeah safety if, standards exactly yeah. i mean but still if you were following the safety standards, you yep. would have said, okay, it can only take a certain amount of weight That's correct. And, and all that. And you would That's have followed correct. that. You wouldn't have just indiscriminately no. filled the entire roof with construction materials. Now, the fact that it was perlite is worse because it rained. Yeah. Okay. There's been a lot of rain in China recently, a lot of flooding, a lot of nonsense going on. And so, of course, as we can see here by this crude 3D model behind us over here, uh, the rain soaked the perlite, which made it heavier. Like you say, it can mm. retain so much water. S- yeah, what, 7 to 16 times the yeah, mass. It's absolutely crazy. So it got heavier and heavier. Yeah, because by itself it's light. Yeah. And so the girls were busy practicing their volleyball downstairs. And uh, on a Sunday, by the way, 
and uh, the roof collapsed on top of them, killing them. Uh, 3 p.m. Yeah. It's, well, yeah, they time. they received the <laughs> emergency call at 2.56 yeah. p.m., so probably who knows how, how much earlier it happened. Did yeah. they phone straight away? Probably. Did someone just notice it and be like, oh, wait, maybe I should call? Because the people inside wouldn't be able to call. It's a Sunday. Yeah, it's true. Who knows? Yeah. Anyway, uh, absolutely tragic and completely avoidable, right? But now this is where I'd like you to take over and explain what's happening here and why is this is what we're seeing here is so bloody sinister. Not yeah, so this is the video that China doesn't didn't want to get out. Mm -hmm. uh, this did go viral before they could shut it down. Uh, but this particular video is... Here's, let me explain how things happen. When a tragedy in China happens, they're going to try to stop the news of it getting out first. And that's yes. absolutely what they do with pretty much everything. And they did that here. If something gets out of control and mm. too many people know about it, they go, okay, well, let people talk about it to have the veneer of like being an open society. Mm -hmm. But we will control the narrative and make sure that we do everything we can to make people not think it was a nefarious thing that happened or the government did a good job. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. How can we become the heroes? This sure. is the government's first thought is. Mm -hmm. So this clip was the one that they really didn't want getting getting out. So mm -hmm. I translated it and I want to go through what this uh, guy is saying because yeah. this is a father of one of the victims, one of the girls yeah. that's just recently passed away. Yeah. And he's in a room full of the other fathers and a couple mothers of the girls that died. And they're standing right here in the hospital where they should be able to go identify the bodies. Well, right? they should be able to get some information. The, because they don't actually know technically if their daughters are dead or not, right? Yeah. It's up in the air. There's all kinds of misinformation. And they keep getting blocked by police. What you don't see is there's a bunch of police here blocking them from going to see what happened, going to see the bodies, right? And the most nefarious thing here that you're about to see, just so you have some context here, is that there are a truckload of government officials that are running censorship and reporting on the behavior of all of these parents, these mourning parents, grieving, I'm not gonna say grieving yet, shocked parents. Yeah, they don't know what's happening. They yet. don't know what's happening here. <clears throat> reporting to government officials about their behavior to make sure that they don't um, instigate any sort of public disruption, to make sure that they don't make the government look bad, to make sure that all their behavior is documented so there could be later punishment, this is all to make sure that nobody lets this leak in this moment. Instead of being the conduit between the doctors and the parents to say, yes, confirmed dead. Yes, you can go see her. Yes, mm -hmm. this is we what need happened. You to identify we need you to identify like this that. person. There is people saying they're not dead. There was people saying they are dead. The doctors were hiding. The police were running defense. The government officials were running defense and being narcs. Yeah. It was the most infuriating and, thing. I mean, the thing is they rounded all the parents up yeah. so none of them could be out there yes. protesting or trying to do anything. They rounded them all up, put them in here, and they didn't give them any information no. about their kids for five hours. No. So they said, oh, you know, oh, yeah, there's an emergency. All come here, grab them there, put them there, and then kept them in the dark for five hours with no updates. The entire priority mm -hmm. was that the government looked good in this scenario. Yeah, and they had to figure out quickly what they yes. could do before they could let it go out there. So let's play this. Yeah, this is what they don't want you to see. And then, then we'll, uh, you know, talk about we'll it. We'll read it. Yeah. This is the current situation. Tell me my daughter's dead. I said we haven't seen my daughter's body. All the kids are covered with mud or covered in dirt and blood. I want them to let me identify. There's a chance that it's not even my daughter. An hour has passed and they still didn't let me go in to identify my kids. The NPC leader has come and said that he just received this notice. NPC is the National People's Congress, so the mm -hmm. government, top yeah, she, government yeah, officials. She used to be official, basically, yeah. What is GTR's government doing? What is the Longsha region government doing? We asked the Education Bureau about the situation and our kids were already dead. Leader, what are you doing? Leader, when I say all of this, I, am I being disorderly? And then the, Yeah, he's actually talking to the police that are standing, yeah, or the which officials that are clear. standing there, yeah. It'll become clear. And they, they say, they replied, we're not leaders, we're just cops, right? Yeah. And he says, I know, there's always cops here blocking us, like blocking us from our daughters. Yeah. You all have been here so long. There are so many education government people here. So what that means is actually the Education Bureau of the CCP, yeah. of the government. Just now I went in there and immediately there was a female government employee following me inside. She didn't go inside to help me talk to the doctor.
all the parents can vouch that she went in there to report us to the government boss, not to help us. So there was supposed to be this conduit to like actually be the go between mm. the gov- this government official. But what she was doing is reporting to her boss. Like this person said this. This person said yeah, exactly. This, this person's <laughs> like, trying to cause trouble. Yeah, it's disgusting, isn't this it? This person might leak this out. Yeah, you know. There's nothing wrong with that, but at least you can. The least you can do is help us talk to the doctor. Let us know what our kids, let us parents know what our kids' situation is. Mm. Answer. Mm. At 8 o'clock, the doctor said the kids were in the ER. So all these parents thought there was hope for their children. Yeah. But then the note already wrote that they're already dead at 5 o'clock. So there was a prior notice that they somehow got privy to, that the, yeah. everyone was dead at 5 o'clock. But the doctors were like, oh, yeah, they're just but in they the only ER. Told the, they only told the parents at 8 that they yeah. were in the ER, even though yeah. they'd already said that they were Do dead you know why? by 5. Because there was a playbook to go by. Yeah, this so, is how the government works. It's like, well, tell them this, then tell them this at this time, then tell them this at this time. Yeah, so they've, they've pronounced them dead at 5. Yeah. And then they only tell the parents yeah, that at doors. 8... They're like, oh, by the way, your child's in the ER. But it's already, without telling them that they're already dead. It's yes. disgusting. Yes. It's fucking disgusting. Are you joking with us? What is the hospital doing? What's the government doing? Just trying to maintain order? And that's such a key phrase there. Yeah. Because that's actually what's trying to happen. Yeah. That's what they're trying to do. Is yeah. just maintain order and save face for the CCP. Correct. Such a big incident and there's no actual leadership showing up. Doctors are hiding. Just a couple dead people. Not a big deal, said the woman. She's being sarcastic. Yeah. Release the information. And GTR is not a big deal. She's being sarcastic. Yeah. Anyway, you get the um, very large frustration that these parents well, are going through. Their kids are just died. It's absolutely disgusting. Your, your daughter's just been killed. Yeah. Okay. And I'm not going to call this an accident because it's not an accident. Okay. Yeah. It's an accident if there's a, a, I don't know, an earthquake or something. But when they actually put the school, whoever the hell was in charge of building that building, put all this construction material on top of the gym where they know that there are children practicing, yes. but they overload the roof, and then it collapses and kills all the children inside, that is killing someone. Yeah. That's murder. That's murder. You know, that's not Negligent like... Negligent murder. Yeah. Yeah. It is. Manslaughter, whatever you want to call it. But that's not like, oh, you know, hand of God or something. Yeah. By the way... Force majeure. Yeah, force majeure, as they like to say. I'd like to point something out here, okay? It's absolutely disgusting that the parents were kept in the dark, that, uh, you know, they already knew the children were all dead but didn't tell them. And a couple of hours after the children were dead, just told the parents, oh, they're in the ER, you better come down here type thing. Because the government had a playbook to follow. Yeah, and they had to get them all in one place. How do we contain this? How do we keep... It's absolutely disgusting. And this is uh, how China works. Yes, You know, yes. that the Chinese government, this is how they work. And that's why we wanted to cover it. It's a great lens into how China operates because of the government. And a lot of people can be relatively supportive or, or apathetic to the government and how awful it is in China until it affects them. And then yes. they freak out and they're like, wait a minute, this is really bad. And this is why it's, it's bad. It's sick. It's this is, sick. And then they are like, oh, you know those dissidents that, uh, you know, keep getting silenced or... That we're yeah. always told yeah. that they're bad and stuff. Guess what? Actually, they were right. Right. I'd like everybody to pay attention. This is this is from the, that Baidu Street View. Remember I showed you earlier yeah. with the Mao Zedong statue pointing at this building? Um, look at the entrance there. Yeah. Okay, it's like gray kind of brick entrance. The reason I want you to see the entrance is here's a picture of the volleyball team that was killed standing at the exact same entrance. And I just want you to take a look at the state of this building. Okay, never mind the, the fact that the girls are there with their coach. That's not what's important. Look at the walls. And the, and the stairs. And the stairs. Take a, take a look. There's water seeping through and cracks yeah. on the freaking bricks on the entrance. Imagine the what tiles. the roof looks like. Yeah, I know. Look at the, the staircase of them walking in. It's all cracked and water's leaking through it, okay? Yeah. Now, if you just look at the state of this building, this is quite common in China. Yes. I see this everywhere. Oh, this is not an outlier. No, like maintenance is really not taken very seriously in China. But imagine looking at this building in this state and thinking, let's put a shit ton of construction material on top of this building. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean, just looking at that, just just that alone, I'd be like, hmm, this building's probably not very good as far as its integrity is concerned. The fact that there's water leaking out of the bricks at the entrance and out of the 
the staircase, it's all cracked and, and stuff. You know, I'd be like, ah, probably not put a metric shit ton of construction material on the roof. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's absolutely disgusting. Ugh. Anyway, so um, these are just a couple of pictures. Obviously, we we blurred the faces. We're not going to show the the dead girls. That, that's that would be in very poor taste. Um, but no, I'd like you to pay attention. You can see those bags in these rescue efforts. Look, those bags of perlite. They're everywhere here. Okay, and this uh, funny metal frame with a ball that you see here is part of the supporting structure of the roof. Mm. Not a very good load-bearing structure. It's basically no. a trellis frame with a concrete slab on top. Yeah. You know? That's and how then, stuff's made in China. Yeah. And, um, you know, these perlite bags, just heavy as all hell, falling down and bringing the entire roof and that metal structure down on everyone. And there's no chance you can survive that. Joseph Johnson reminded in 2006, right? Remember this? They're mm -hmm. trying to legally adding floors to a shopping mall in Guangdong and it killed 100 people. And yeah. that's that's what they do often. They try yes. to add things onto things that aren't supposed to have additions on top. Absolutely. Too. I mean, look, we could go back to the 2008 earthquakes where, what, like at least 7,000 students died. 5,000, yeah. But there was well, like 90,000 total. Yeah. And that was official. Yeah. So, I mean, more than that. Yeah. So, at least 5,000, you say? Yeah. Yeah, and give or take a couple thousand, eh? Yeah, well, China will downplay mm -hmm. the numbers. So. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so let's go back to the in initial slide that I showed. Why would they not allow flowers to be sold on Chichihar Road? Yeah. Well, Chichihar is the name of the city that's happened. Yes. And in many big cities in China, n street names would be named after other big cities yeah. in China. I mean, like now, N Nanjing Road in yeah. Shanghai is yeah. the big shopping streets named after Nanjing. Yes. So you have mm. all these different names. You have Beijing Lu, you have Nanjing Lu, mm -hmm. and here you have Chichihar Lu. And on Chichihar Road, they had some flower shops and they shut them down because they don't want people in Shanghai to buy flowers to commemorate the Chichihar disaster that just happened. Because in Chichihar right now, there's a lot of videos going around of people buying flowers to lay down at the school to commemorate the dead girls, okay? So they don't want it to spread. And they've got good reason, because remember what happened last time with a street in Shanghai? Yes, that was Arumchi Lu. Yes. Here we can see the um, Chinese government workers taking the street sign away to try and hide the name of the street. So there's a fire in Arumchi, there's mm -hmm. a city in China, in Xinjiang, and what happens uh, happened is they didn't want people talking about all the people that burned to death because it was due to government negligence that this And happened. it was due to COVID lockdowns. And COVID lockdowns. They were locked in the building. So they were like, holy shit, we better not let anyone talk about this. And people were protesting on Arumchi Street in Shanghai. Yeah. Right. To commemorate what happened and say, listen, this is this is bad. Like you guys need to stop all this control. And so what did they do? They just literally removed the sign. Yeah. They, they blocked the signs first. Then they put barriers down the street. Remember, and then they took the signs down so people couldn't even go to find the road or whatever. To me, this is the most damning thing is like to, to look at how China operates through this mm -hmm. lens is that you're looking at a situation where China just lost uh, a whole volleyball team. Yes. And it young, was aspiring with futures ahead yes. of them. There is a whole, mm. there was a whole uh, outcry locally of what happened. They had to control the narrative, stop, and make sure that the parents didn't make a big uproar. uproar. That was the yeah. biggest priority. And then in other cities in China, shut down flower shops on the name of the street that has the same name yeah. of the city where it happened because it's more important that people don't talk about this. Mm -hmm. than to actually deal with the problem. Yeah, That's how China operates. And I think that's what you have to understand when you do business with China, mm -hmm. when you go to China, when you understand how China operates with the government in power that's currently in power, the CCP, the priority is deception, lies, and saving face at all costs. Yeah. Even at the most small local of incidents, saving the nation's face because the government can't look bad is the priority. Yeah, and once again, we see the, the tofu dread construction and all the shortcuts that are taken when it comes to construction yeah. coming into play here. Yeah. And uh, I hate to say it, but this is something that's not going to go away. Yeah. It's just awful, and everyone uh -uh. keeps defending it. You know, that's the yeah. thing. Look how fast China builds things. Look how amazing they can put up all these, you know, high-speed rails and bridges and stuff so quickly. Yeah. This is the price that you pay for that poor construction ethic that they have in China. That idea of let's make sure we just build it and do it quickly and take as many shortcuts as, as possible, do it as cheaply as possible so we can brag that we can build things fast. Yes. You know? <laughs> yeah. So um, here's the thing. This is in very poor taste. And so I had to point it out. 
Yeah. Uh, there's this guy. His name's Eric Solheim, and he's like, um, he's part of the Green Belt and Road Initiative or something. He's, yeah. He's linked to Chinese propaganda because um, he's constantly just posting how great China is and look at all the great things China can do. Et he's a Norwegian diplomat. Yeah. Anyway, but he's he's always doing uh, propaganda for he's China. He's pro CCP. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think it's his main thing is to boost China. Mm. Um, because if you look at his Twitter feed, it's all like China builds this, China builds that. I mean, look if I quick. look him up, most mm. of what he does is retweet CCP officials. Yeah. Anyway, but it's not his tweet in particular no, that he, he happened. I said retweets. He yeah. just happened to post it on the day of the collapse. Mm-hmm. But it's Chen Wei Hua retweeted it. Now let's talk about Chen Wei Hua for a second here. See up there, Chen Wei Hua. Chen Wei Hua is the China Daily European Union Bureau um, chief. chief. So for those of you who don't know um, what that's all about, is um, China Daily is China's official newspaper, mm-hmm. okay? Rim and Rubao. It's like, that's what it is. It's big. It's the official Chinese government newspaper. So he's the bureau chief for the European Union. So he represents the Chinese government. He represents the news coming out of China as the chief head of their propaganda newspaper abroad mm. in the European Union. Now, he's a firebrand, okay? Well, they call him shit talker in chief. Shit talker chief. <laughs> I mean, look at what he, look at what, he, th- this is just some of the things he posts. You know, like the German foreign minister was talking about some COVID-19 stuff and et cetera. And, and so he just replies, the fucking mass. Um, <laughs> okay, we love that line. But he's like, yeah. why is this shit face Pompeo still doing this? And he's like, wear a mask and t- stop talking shit. And remember that, uh, some senator said, like, uh, China's 5,000 years of history of cheating and stealing. So he's like, bitch. And then he's like, this is the most racist, ignorant U.S. senator I've ever seen in a lifetime, bitch. <laughs> he's very diplomatic. I mean, very she's, she's diplomatic. not very diplomatic with that, but at no. least she's not, like, you know, cross. And then someone's like, meet the China Daily uh, bureau chief. And he's just like, bitch. And he's like, hi, Marco. This is an understatement. But she's much worse than that. Anyway, the thing is, he's posting this freaking tweet from this um, Belt and Road propagandist guy on the 23rd about China building things fast and quick. On On, that day. On the same exact day, let's go back there, um, that uh, this thing collapsed and killed those those girls. So I had to point it out because um, in my mind, this is nothing other than a diversion. Yep. And, yep, they always do this and, when there's a disaster. Yeah, whenever there's a disaster. Remember, like, we noticed this way back when there was all those terrible floods near the Three Gorges Dam area, and they had all those foreigners go up there to say, look how beautiful the Three Gorges scenic area is. That's what they do. It's like, quickly, divert away. Let's show how great China is. Look, is that not just very... It's either incredibly bad timing or it's absolutely it's intentional and unproposed. It's always intentional. By the yeah. way, there's another hack too. Yeah. Remember in uh, the Soviet Union, what used to happen is everyone always knew if something really bad happened, if the radio suddenly turned to like classical music, mm. that was like a thing. Okay. Because like they were getting ready to be like, how do we address the public on this? Typical communist country, there has tons of bureaucracy and red tape to go through. The, like, how do we tell everyone that the leader died or whatever, Yeah, exactly. Right? In China, it's the same thing, but you can go to Twitter. Mm-hmm. Now, China blocks Twitter, but they allow their government propagandists and diplomats to use Twitter. And yes. that's the only, if you ever see a Chinese official tweeting, tweeting, it's for propaganda for yeah. the state. Mm-hmm. So don't interact with them unless no. you're trolling. You exactly. Can troll them you can troll them. I troll them a lot. Anyway, the point is, mm-hmm. in this process, you'll see when they start tweeting about things like pandas then something they're trying to cover up has happened. And it's like, goes oh, without yeah. fail. It goes, it's it's without fail, this happens. If there's something bad that the Chinese government doesn't want the rest of the world to know about, they start tweeting about pandas. Yeah. It's the Soviet Union's version of that. Like yeah. the, the version of that, uh, China's version of the Soviet Union thing. Yeah, so bad um, construction practices, illegal construction practices, a building collapses, kills a volleyball team of young girls. And uh, what are we going to tweet about is how... China is able to construct ten-story residential buildings in a day. It's almost very a, a bad idea to, to tweet it's this out. In you'll such, be like, "Wow, that's why it sucks. such poor <laughs> taste." Like, that's why they build it. Yeah, exactly. Sucks. Yeah, if you're going to spend a day building a building, of course yeah. it's going to fall down and kill young girls. Yeah, um, it's really quite quite freaking disgusting. Yeah. Anyway, the, you know the, the the way I want to cap this off is that yeah. there's no. There is acknowledgement uh, from some of the state media because it spread too quickly. But they try to control the narrative. They try to shut down discourse. They don't want the nation talking about this too much. And the most important thing that comes out of this is that 
I think it'll be forgotten relatively quickly. It will be. And no one, no one, like from the whole, you know, the whole shill sphere, like the people that run defense for the CCP, they, they won't bring it up. No, let's see them. Let's see them. Yeah. Uh, you know, hey, Cyrus, how about you talk about this? Yeah. You know, yeah. any of you guys out there, any yeah. of the shill squad, let's see you make a video about this. Yeah. You know, this is also why we had to bring it up now, because if we leave it till Friday, it'll be buried. Yep. This is not, they, they get rid of this news they quickly. They do, it's and weird. And you know, you, you think, oh, they censor stuff on the Chinese internet, but they mm -hmm. also censor stuff on Google and like the Western internet. Yeah. We watch stuff get removed from search results. Yeah. It's weird. I don't know how they do it. Oh, it's just SEO and paying yeah. people off. Now, one thing I've got to, got to uh, explain to all of you, why it transpired the way it did with the parents being all kind of bundled together like that and kept yeah. in the dark for so long is they needed to, like you say, follow a playbook. And they did follow their playbook. And this is what they did, is they blamed, uh, well, first of all, they uh, came, they arrested all the sort of bosses that were in charge. I think they've arrested 10 people that are linked to the construction company that was building the thing. Yeah. And that was their way of calming the public is, okay, look, what are we going to do? This is a, a bad thing. This shouldn't have happened. You know, come on, like common sense. Anyone passing by would be able to see why are they loading the yeah. shit on top. The school obviously knows about this. Everybody knows about this. The party leader that's in the school. Because don't forget, every school's got a party member that kind of watches over the place. You know, they got a party department in every school. Everybody knows about this. The local police, everything's going to, everyone's going to know about this. No secret. So this thing collapses, kills these girls. They're like, shit, what are we going to do? Keep the parents quiet. Uh, 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 okay, let's quickly arrest everybody so that we can put a bulletin out there to say that everything's being taken care of. We've arrested the people in charge. This is like an isolated incident. It's just in that little area, mm -hmm. you know, it's because the local, um, you know, party members were not, you know, paying attention or whatever. That's what they did in Wuhan during the COVID outbreak. Yeah. Oh, the local officials allowed this, not the na not the national officials. Yeah. And then later they're like, wait a minute, no, we, the people we arrested and like disappeared. Yeah. Uh, actually, it, it didn't even come from China. So. Exactly. <laughs> so um, at the end of the day, what you have is the government making excuses so that they can kind of compartmentalize it and push yeah. it away. Yeah. Now, if anyone asks, hey, what's going on? They can say, oh, don't worry. We've already arrested the people uh, from the construction. It's all taken care of. Now we've demanded inspections because they have now said, now we, we demand that all schools get inspected to make sure that their structural integrity is okay. And that's how China does it. They wait until a freaking disaster before they, they do anything. They're never proactive. Well, going to be done, though. It's no, bullshit. People but just get paid off. And it's they just the it's pro, it's like pro, the elevator yeah. inspection. Yeah, exactly. It's never proactive. It's always reactive. That's how the Chinese government works. And so as a result, um, all of these girls are dead. And, uh, you know, this is just unacceptable. Good job, China. Keep saving your face and letting children die because you think it's more important not to let people know and protect the CCP's gold watches and Baijiu and cigarette bribes. Mm -hmm. Yep. And so, again, uh, guys, this is why it's so dangerous. Um, there, there are dangers in China that you cannot see. Yeah. Okay? And this is one of them, and it's the poor construction quality. A roof can collapse. A sign can fall off a building and hit you on the street. You know, you never know what's going to You can be swallowed by a sinkhole. These things do happen. Not saying it's like massively common but it is something that happens yeah it's a it's another hidden danger and these girls didn't know it was coming nope you know and uh, it's an absolute tragedy because one other thing you have to realize is that for every child in china remember the one child policy all these these girls are a result of the one child policy right um they're they're too old to be from the two child policy generation so one child's death affects three families yeah not only the parents, but the grandparents on each side, mm -hmm. you know, because it's not like that they have a bunch of grand grandkids running around no. because think about it. Each set of grandparents only had one child. Their child has one child and uh, that child's dead. That's the three families, hopes and dreams and everything shattered yep. just like that. And yep. it affects society massively. And that's why, you know, when you get those revenge attacks, they go after kids because they know that it affects society so much. You're affecting six people at minimum. Yeah. By, by killing one child. Yeah. So it's just an absolute tragedy.